we can use complex functions to evaluate a lot of real improper integrals. Real integrals from zero to infinity or from minus infinity to plus infinity. Our complex integrals will give, will give us the so-called principal value of the real integrals. In this video you will learn what is meant with this principal value and you will see also two important theorems that tell us when this principal value is the same as the real integral. So let us revisit those improper integrals first. What does this mean, the integral from 0 to infinity f x dx? Well, that means that you have to take the integral from 0 to some r first, compute that, and then take the limit r to infinity. That's what it meant. So what about integral from minus infinity to infinity? There you have to be a bit careful. You have to split them up first, minus infinity to 0 and from 0 to infinity, and then take both limits separately. So in this case you have two limits. Uh, the limit uh, r1 to minus infinity from r1 to 0, and the limit r2 to infinity from 0 to r2. Now what's the principal value of an integral? Well, what you do then is you integrate from minus r to r, and then you take one limit, r to infinity. But that's a bit different uh, from the notion of our, of our improper integral, where you had to split up first and take two separate limits. So what's the consequence of this? Well, for example, if you compute the principal value of an easy integral, integral of the function x. So what do you need to do then? Well, you have to integrate from minus, minus r to r first, and then take the limit r to infinity. Well, if we integrate from minus r to r the function x, we get 1 half x squared as uh, antiderivative, plug in r, we get 1 half r, r squared, minus, plug in minus r, also uh, 1 half r squared, so we get, we get 0, and then take the limit r to infinity, so we'll still have 0. So the principal value of this integral equals 0. However, if you compute the real integral, what do you need to do? Integral minus infinity x dx, you have to split it up first, uh, limit r1 to infinity uh, minus r1 to 0 plus limit r2 to infinity from 0 to uh, r2. Well, this first integral you get first at the derivative, 1 half, r squ one half x squared, uh, plug in the 0, which is 0, and plug in the uh, r1, you get 1 half r1 squared, and then you have to take that to infinity. So this integral actually diverges. Uh, si similarly for the other one, this one diverges as well. So here you see that due to the fact that you have to take the two limits, f the limits separately, you get two diverging integrals, so the result is a diverging integral. So the principal value of an integral, they converge, uh, whereas the improper integral itself does not converge. So in that sense, uh, an, uh, a principal value co a integral converges a bit faster, it is weaker. And that's the uh, uh, first theorem. Um, if the improper integral converges, then also the principal value uh, converges, but not vice versa, as we saw from the examples 1 and 2. So why is this true? Well, the principal value of the integral, minus infinity to infinity, what does that mean? Uh, integrate from minus r to r and then take the limit. Uh, we can split up the integral from minus r to r into parts, minus r to 0 plus 0 to r, uh, and then take the limit r to infinity. And now, uh, because our uh, improper integral converges, uh, we can split it up because both limits, con limits converge. So this one converges and that one converges, uh, which equals by definition our integral from minus infinity to infinity. So we see uh, that if our uh, improper integral converges, so does the principal value, but not necessarily the other way around. Unfortunately, our complex integrals will always give us uh, principal values. Um, so uh, when, when this, for example, your uh, integral uh, converges, if your principal value converges, when does the opposite holds? Well, for example, for an even function. So if you have an even function, so f of x equals f of minus x, so for, for example, for cosine of x or for x squared, then if the principal value converges, so does the improper integral. 
And that's really nice because the results of our uh, computations will always be those principal values. And we would like to have information about the original integral. So why does this hold? Well, uh, the integral for minus r1 to 0 of f of x. Uh, we have an even function, so integrating from minus r1 to 0 is the same as integrating from 0 to r1, because the contributions are the same on both sides of the y-axis. So the uh, integral from minus r1 to 0 is the same from 0 to r1, uh, so that equals one half of the total distance from one half of the integral from minus r1 to r1. So that's what we have over here. And similarly for integral from 0 to r2, it's the same as integral from minus r2 to 0. So this total one is twice uh, the integral from 0 to r2. So the integral to for 0 to r2 equals 1 half times the integral from minus r2 to r2 fx dx. And then we can combine this. Uh, integral from minus r1 to r2 equals 1 half this one plus 1 half that one. Uh, and uh, then we can take uh, limits uh, r1 to infinity and r2 to infinity. If we take r1 and r2 to infinity, then we get on the left-hand side uh, our improper integral. And on the right-hand side, we get those integrals for r1 to infinity and for r2 to infinity. But those two are the principal values of the integrals, which are assumed to converge. So that gives us uh, one half times principal value of the integral plus another principal value of the integral equals one half times two times the principal value of the integral equals the principal value of the integral. So for even functions, uh, we do not have to worry uh, because if our principal value of the integral converges, so does the real improper integral.